What's up guys, it is Starflord here. Today I'm bringing you a brand new video and this is the two-handed mage build. But first, if you haven't seen already, I'm doing a giveaway, so go check that out. Hit subscribe if you haven't already and let's get into this build. So I'll go through the spells quickly and then after that explain what you want to do in combat and then show off the combat of the build and then after that guys I'm going to be showing you all of the gear that goes into this character. So first we are going into the spirit tree taking barrier with the energetic defense so it lasts a bit longer if we for some reason are taking no damage. Then we're going into the storm tree going to go down the full right hand side taking energy barrage with the energy storm upgrade because in this build I will show you later this is a much better upgrade. Then we're taking conductive current to be able to get down to static charge to then be able to get static cage with the lightning cage upgrade so we can get some insane damage out from the static cage. Next, we're going into the Inferno Tree, taking Immolate just to get to a Flashpoint, which is such a key spell. Getting Pyromancer and then taking Fire Mine with the Flaming Array upgrade, because we are really going to be up in their face, which is why we're taking the Flaming Array instead of the Searing Glyph. Then we're going into the Winter, which is a huge part of this build, taking Winter's Grass with the Winter's Ruin upgrade to synergize with our Blizzard, taking Fade Step with the Energizing Step for that insane mana recovery that we always want and usually need, taking Winter's Stillness just for those times. In this build, you don't really need it, but you have to take it to be able to get down, to get to Ice Mine, to get to Ice Armor, to then be able to get to what we want, which is Blizzard with the Winter Winds upgrade, which which means it just lasts 10 seconds and just costs a flat 40 mana which is really effective. Lastly guys we are going into a necromancer taking horror with the terror upgrade so enemies will stay feared until they go below 25% health. So guys, getting into the explanation of this build, as you guys will know, this is a two-handed build, so we're gonna be right up in their face. And that is why with the energy barrage, we are taking the energy storm. And the reason is, is because energy barrage will always fire every projectile out straight in front of you. And even though energy storm targets any random character or enemy, if they are right in front of you, they will just hit them straight away because the projectiles will instantly hit that enemy. So with Energy Barrage, with Energy Storm, you can get a lot more damage out on a specific target that you want. And it is crazy. Obviously, we're going to try to synergize Blizzard with Winter's Gruff so that we can get that insane 1000% weapon damage bonus. We're going to try and combo Static Cage and Fire Mine together, but if you can't or you're just thinking, I don't have enough mana to get this out, just use Fire Mine. It's such a good spell in this build. Fade Step, as always, just for mobility, getting to where you want or getting out of a situation and also using it to get that mana. Horror, we're using mainly for those annoying range units or just any unit that you can't specifically get to and they are trying to kill you and they're just being annoying. Or if you're in a small group trying to horror as many as you can and just hitting them because then they won't be able to hit you back until they go below 25% health. And barrier, as always, you want to try and keep it up as much as possible. But if you are doing some kind of combo or you've got something else more prioritized and you have the health available, then use barrier. Now, one thing I want to say for all of you playing on consoles is I've seen this quite a lot. If I've ever shown combos or anything, just utilize the pause game feature a hell of a lot. I know, you, I believe you can do it on Xbox. I'm pretty sure you can and on PS4, obviously, and just utilize this. It might sometimes make uh, the combat a little bit less fluid when you are doing combos, but it means you can cast a spell, instantly pause the game, and then get ready to cast another. And that will help you guys use the builds and be able to pull off what I can pull off on PC. Because obviously on PC, it's a lot easier to do these things. But combat is one of the most important parts, including the gear as well. So we'll get into the combat and then the gear. So let's just get straight into this. So guys, for this combat, we're going to focus this guard guy down at first because he can just knock you over and be annoying. Horror him into a one-shot fire mine. Go over to this archer, freeze it to then be able to run away and get a barrier off and also get the mana back. This then 
makes the archer also run into the fire mine, so it triggers putting Blizzard down on these three over here, so the archers run away uh, slower, so it's harder for them to get away. Winter's Grass, the melee, Energy Barrage, the archer, and then fire mine at the last one. Basically one showing every single one of them, and the Energy Barrage, as you saw, done a ton of damage. Horroring the archers so that they do no damage, putting another barrier down before the boss comes in to try and one-shot me. Was going to put a blizzard down, but then he jumped out of range, so I went his grasp so that he wouldn't be able to get anywhere. Now, putting down a static cage, was going to put down a blizzard, but then unleashed energy barrage, doing a ton of damage. Putting down a fire mine, nearly kills the boss, so I'm going to run it into the fire mine, which triggers it and kills that boss. Finally, and then finishing these two tigers off with... Blizzard, Winter's Grasp, and then our Energy Barrage to finish it off. Really insane build, never dies. You can see the healing is mental. Here's a short film for you guys. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> So guys, I hope you have enjoyed the combat and the short film, and let's just get into the gear. I'll show you the schematics that I've used to craft this gear in a bit, but let's just go into the explanation of what I've got. I've mainly got a lot of healing from damage I've taken, and also some defensives, and then a little bit of offense so that I can stay alive as much as possible so the weapon it has the rampage on hit effect as you guys may have seen before i've also got the masterwork that heals me for 25 percent of the damage i take over 10 seconds which is a really really important thing for this build plus 18 percent heal on kill so that whenever we kill anyone we get big heals we got that crit chance as well and i've also got that superb lightning rune on it Moving on to my armor, as you can see this has plus 60% heal bonus so all of my healing is increased by a hell of a lot. We also have the heal for 25% of damage taken over 10 seconds again so we're getting even more healing and as you can see I've got max health on it. So just alone from the sword and the armor I'm getting a ton of healing out on myself and as you can see as well my hat also has 
plus 36 percent heal bonus so as you can see i've got like 96 percent heal bonus and healing for about 50 percent damage over 10 seconds not only that but we have the belt of life which gives us a 10 percent heal bonus so we've got 106 percent. so we're basically healing a ton this means you can go out there go below 100 percent health and basically heal all of your health up just put a barrier down and then all of your health will suddenly be full without using any pots or anything Next, we're taking Andrasi's Sacrifice, and this lets you tank. So if you want this build in a party, you can use it. It will taunt everyone nearby, and it also gives you that mana regen and cooldown modifier, which makes you even better at killing enemies. Obviously, using Ring of Doubt, which gives us that 100% crit that we need, and you can also use Stealth to be able to manipulate your enemies and put them where you want. And the last we are taking the Ring of Slicing, which gives us crit chance and a bit of crit damage bonus for things like the second we come out of stealth and when we aren't in stealth, we have that extra chance of getting a crit. And that is it, guys. Some insane armor and weapons. And I'll just quickly go and show you the schematics and then that will be it. So guys, let's just get into the schematics for this build. For the weapon, you will need the rare weapons mod. And if you can't get mods, I'll show you the weapon you can craft that you don't need mods for. But if you have the rare weapons mod, which I think if you're on PC, you definitely should have. You need to get the pointed more. This one looks absolutely insane, as you guys know. And yeah that is that schematic now if you don't have the mod guys you need to go and get this blade schematic and i believe it's from the dlcs i'm not a hundred percent sure but yeah this is a two-handed mage schematic you can also get a sword this sword here but it is only like a uh, one-hander so it's not as good whereas this blade will offer you a bit more damage and that is the two weapons that i would use for this build for the armor you want to go obviously to the light armor and we're using the vestments of the dragon hunter i'm pretty sure that's what it's called there you go text just finally loaded in and this is the epic looking armor that we're using so yeah if you guys want to know how to get these schematics you can just always just type them into google and there's every location on how to get them all the time if you want the helm i believe yep it's the cow of the pure just this one right here and with all of this you'll be able to get what you want so guys i hope you have enjoyed this video i hope you're all excited to use this build if you guys are going ahead and using this build i wish you the best of luck leave a like comment below hit that subscribe button and i will see you next time